two farmers are called Panganai and Washoma. Here is Washoma on his way from the village to the store, taking what he can spare from his maize crop to sell. His harvest has been very poor, and what he has for sale isn't much, and even on a clumsy sledge it can easily be pulled by two oxen. But Washoma isn't the kind of man who worries about things like that. Panganai, too, is coming to sell maize at the store. Like Washoma, his crop has been small. But Panganai is not content, either with small crops or with just a sledge to carry them on. He wonders all the time how he can get more crops from his land so that he can have more to sell and what he needs for his house and his garden. But meanwhile, he must sell what he has got and see what he can do to make next season a better one. This farmer seems to have done better than Panganai or Washoma. A scotch cart like this is twice as good as a sledge. It carries much more and yet runs smoothly and easily without plowing up the ground as it goes along. Ah, what couldn't I do with a scotch cart like that? What a beauty. And yet, I work as hard as he does, and all I've got is a sledge. Still, it's no use dreaming. Get along there. There's no time to waste. I've got to get to the store to sell my maize. But somehow or other, I'm going to find a way to get better crops, and I'll have a scotch cart as good as that one. So Panganai went to the store and sold his mealies. Come over here, daughter. Take these sacks and put them back onto the sledge and wait for me there. I want to have a look at this scotch cart over here. It looks even better than that other one. Yes, it's a beauty. But it would cost a lot, more than I could manage. No. I'll have to get much better crops before I can save enough money to think about buying a scotch guard. Oh well. Hello? What's going on over there? Ah, oh, Washoma. Good morning, neighbor. I hope you're well. And good morning to you, Panganai. I hope you are well too. What's going on over there? It must be something interesting for everyone to be gathering around like that to see it. Well, let's go and see what it is. All right, come along then. You stay here, daughter, and look after the oxen. Wait till I come back. So Panganai and Washoma walked over to see what was going on. As they went, they talked about the crops they had just sold, and Panganai told Washoma about the scotch cart he wanted so badly. Yes, it's a meeting of some kind. Everyone's listening to someone talking. Well. We've got time to spare now the harvest's in. Let's go and see what it's all about. It might be interesting. But that Scotch cart man, it's a beauty. It's a European talking. We'll sit down and find out what he's saying. The European is the provincial agriculturist, and he is just finishing telling the people about good and bad maize crops, and saying how he can help them to make their crops better. Here we are. There's a space in the middle there. Just the right distance from him to hear everything nicely. Now, what's he saying? So do as I say, and you'll all have good crops. The people have all been listening, and now they're waiting for Machiri, the demonstrator, to repeat everything to make sure that everybody understands. For there is a lot to listen to and a lot to learn, for those who are interested and want to learn. But Washoma doesn't think much of it. Machiri starts telling how good work, done in the proper way, will produce good crops. Uh, this is a waste of time. I've just got my crops in. Who cares about next year? You want good crops, but all most of you can grow is poor stuff like this. Yes, that's perfectly true. My maize was just like that stalk. I wish I could grow it as big as the other. I think I'll have a word with this demonstrator and see whether he can improve my crops. So Panganai 
asked Machiri to help him. Machiri looked at his garden and told him that he would have to move it as it was in the grazing area. So now he's marking out contour ridges for Panganai's new garden. It's a great opportunity for Panganai to have good new land and he is determined to work well on it and produce good crops. Bit more to the right. Bit more. Right, that's it. Make your contour ridges the width of two hoes along these points. That's that one fixed. And now for the last one. Over to the left there. Cross a bit. Steady. Hold it. Just a shade more. Steady again. Right. That's the spot. Now, let me remind you once more about where to plant your different crops. Next season, when you've got all the new ground ready, plant munga on this plot. There, ground nuts. Then ripoko. And your maize over there. Don't forget to do your plowing before the rains. Well, I must be off. Well, there's plenty to do here. But I must say goodbye first and ask Machiri to come and see how I'm getting on as often as he can. Oh, Machiri, goodbye and thank you. Come again soon. Goodbye, good luck. Well, here goes. He said, mark it out straight away, so let's get started. He's done his share. Now it's up to me to do mine. One, two. And here's the beginning of my new land and my better crops. But while Panganai is working, what about Washoma? The only work he's doing is lifting his elbow. He and his cronies have settled down to drink and are quite happy to let their land look after itself. They talk and complain about all the work that people like Machiri want them to do and laugh at Panganai for believing what he has told and working after the harvest is in. More friends join them, and the talk gets wilder as the beer goes down. So, when Machiri arrives at the village, they don't even notice that he's coming, and go on drinking until a boy tells Washoma that a visitor has arrived. But Washoma, even at the best of times, doesn't think very much of Machiri, and now, after the drinking, he forgets his manners. And when he does get up to meet Machiri, it is not to welcome him by any means. What do you want, spying round here again? Good morning. I thought you might like some help about this land of yours. Help? I don't want any help from you. But you see, Washoma, you have some really good land over there, just being wasted. Why, if you cleared and stumped it now, and then ploughed it, I could show you how to plant it and look after it in such a way that you'd get a really good lot of crops. You're always telling people how to do things, but you come to the wrong person this time. All right, but don't blame me when harvest comes. Go on and get out of my sight. I'm sick and tired of you and all the other nosy parkers. All through the winter, Pang and I worked hard in the way that Machiri had told him. After he'd marked out his plots, he cleared and stumped his land so that his crops would have all its goodness. Then, while it was still winter, he harnessed his oxen and ploughed it in the way he had been shown, across the slope of the ground. It was hard work, but he stuck to it, because he was determined to do everything properly. He carefully collected all the manure from his cattle crawl so that he could feed the land and make it strong. It must never get hungry and weak as his old garden had. And he carried it out and spread it over his land as he had been shown. He was determined that however much trouble it was, his new land should have every care. It was no use asking for advice if he wasn't going to work properly to put it into practice. And so, by the time the season for the rains had come, he had cleared his land, stumped it, ploughed it, and fed it with manure. Then 
he made ready for planting in the proper way, using the row marker as Machiri had taught him. And now, everything was finished. Panganai was ready for the rains, and just in time, for the rains were coming. Soon, they would be busy doing their share of the work in the partnership, an essential share, too. Yes, thought Panganai, now I'm getting the help I need. I shall soon get the reward of all my hard work. And Panganai got his reward. But Washoma, he got his reward too, a lazy man's reward. No wonder he looks fed up. I was afraid this plot would be ruined. Look, Washoma, didn't I tell you that your harvest would be poor? No, oh, Lord, he's off again. What's it got to do with him? You won't go far with that ragged lot of mealies. Why, they're worse than last year's. And they were bad enough to make anyone think. What, you again? You come round as regularly as the fever, and as welcome. And look at that bit of land there. You'll never grow anything there now. You wouldn't protect it with contour ridges, so it's gone, just as I warned you. And it'll never come back again. You could have had good land here to give you food for yourself and your family, and enough crops to bring you money for many other things. Now, your crops are worse than before, and the land you've neglected will never grow food for your children. Oh, go away. I'm sick and tired of you and the likes of you. You hang around like vultures. Well, I can't stop you wasting your opportunities, I suppose. But there are many other people more worth talking to. So Machiri left Washoma with his paltry crops and ruined land and carried on with his tour. That man Washoma and his likes aren't worth the trouble I take over them. I can't teach them anything, but hard facts will teach them soon enough, whether they like it or not. Let's go and see someone worth seeing. Panganai's new gardens are along this way. And he's a man who's had enough sense to look after his land. Yes, here they are. Hey, Panganai! How are you? And how are your lands? Can I come and see your crops? Hello? Who's that? Wait a moment. I'm coming, whoever you are. Oh, good morning, Manchiri. I'm very glad to see you. Good morning, Peng and I. You seem to have done well. Come along and have a look round. Yes? I've got plenty of good stuff to repay you for all your hard work. Yes. You've done well, Panganai. These mealies are good enough to show as an example to all the people at the next meeting. And your apoko is excellent. Your work's being repaid. Ground nuts? Yes. They're fine. And your munga over there? Yes, that's excellent too. Well done indeed, Peng and I. You worked well, and here is your reward. And the Peng and I's harvest was so good that he had to make many journeys to the store to sell everything. And each time, he needed four oxen to pull the great load of good produce on the sledge. But it was work that was no work. Yes, it's been a good season. There's been plenty of hard work, but now I'm going to get my reward. I shall have plenty of money now to buy all the things I've needed for so long. And won't it make Washoma and the others open up their eyes? They'll realize now that he who lasts last, lasts longest. At last, everything was sold. Go over to the oxen, daughter, while I left the sledge. Come and give me a hand with the old sledge, friends. But why does Pang and I want his sledge lifted? It could only be to put it onto something. Can it be? Yes. 
Panganai has at last bought himself a Scotch guard. Well done indeed, Panganai. You've earned it. Come along. Come along. We're off home. Get up there. Get up. Come along. This isn't difficult to pull like the old sledge. Come along, Oxen. Pull my fine new cart for me. Feel how smoothly it goes behind you. So Panganai and his daughter and his oxen set off home with the new Scotch cart. Panganai thinking how different this was from last year, before he had listened to what the provincial agriculturist and Machiri had said. He waved goodbye to the people at the store and took the road home cheerfully. And Washoma? He too had set out to sell his produce. But he was just where he always had been. Two sacks of poor crops on a clumsy sledge. Come along, Oxen. Come along. We're not far from home now. How much quicker we've got there with this Scotch cart. And wait till all my neighbours see it. Come along, Oxen. There's a long way to go yet. Who's this? Panganai? With a Scotch cart? But how did he get that? What's he got that I haven't? I've just as much land as he has. Yet, but surely, could this be what Machiri was talking about? It's certainly a fine Scotch cart. Ah, who'd have thought it possible Panganai could have a cart? Greetings, Washoma. Greetings, indeed. Going around setting himself up like that. I don't know, I'm sure. Greetings, I think. And that is the end of the story of the two farmers. Panganai going home with his scotch cart, and Washoma still dragging his old sledge off to the store. <laughs>